Hey everyone, and welcome back to Parker's Tutorials. This week I have a special episode, and I'm going to be showing you how to make an automatic cat feeder powered by an Arduino. It's pretty cool. So let's get started. Now before we get started, I want to say that this project took about probably six weeks from inception to the final product. And this is because I went through at least four cardboard prototypes of what I wanted it to look like. Well, anyways, let's start the tutorial. The first step in this project is to work on the Arduino components. I ordered a starter kit online that included an Adafruit Metro board by mistake, but this will work on any Arduino based microcontroller. For this project, you'll also need to order a PCF8523 real time clock breakout board from Adafruit. This is the chip that will be able to keep track of time so that commands can be executed at specific times. You'll also need a high torque servo motor. I ordered mine from Adafruit as well. Links for all this can be found in the description down below. Once you've assembled all the components using a breadboard, it's time to program the Arduino on the computer. Thanks to Reddit user Dan Road, I was able to figure out how the coding was supposed to work. Here's a basic rundown of the code. First, all of our components are defined. Then, we move on to the setup. This is the portion of the code that runs once at the beginning. In my setup, I'm basically telling the Arduino to display the time from the real-time clock on the serial monitor. The serial monitor can be viewed on the computer while the Arduino is connected. The next section is the loop section. This is the action that will repeat itself until the code is overwritten or reset. And that's it! Once that's finished, I built a prototype using cardboard and created a mechanism that works like a revolving door to dispense food. The servo rotates 90 degrees to allow food to pass for half a second and then reverts back to its initial position. Then I built another prototype using PVC and foam core. This was my first failure, as I used a 90 degree angle instead of a 45 and the food didn't have enough momentum to make it out of the pipe. The solution was to get bigger PVC pipes. For the servo mechanism, I first drilled a hole straight through the middle of the PVC section that connects the angled piece and the food intake funnel. I connected the included servo mount and drilled two small holes on each side to fit small bolts through so they could be attached to a small, thin piece of wood. Make sure the servo plastic thing is connected and screwed firmly into the servo. Then I drilled a hole on the other side of the wood and epoxied a quarter inch wooden dowel into the hole and let it dry for about an hour. I made a plastic disc that was a little less than the diameter of the PVC and mounted it on the wooden dowel using a small nut and bolt. For the overall enclosure, I wanted to use pre-cut wood squares from the craft store so I didn't have to cut anything and make a basic box. I used a half inch square dowel, cut them into two inch pieces and glued them on the side edges of the wooden squares. These will be used as supports when I glue the other sides of the box together. I drilled a four inch hole on the top piece of the box that fits flush with the PVC funnel. Then, cut or drill a 2.5 inch hole on the front board where the PVC will come out. Assemble the box using more wood glue and square dowels as well as hot glue. I added hinges to one side of the box so that it could easily be opened so I could adjust the electronics or fiddle with the PVC. Next I assembled the PVC section inside the box and epoxied the pieces to the wood. Then I mounted the servo in place using wood, L brackets, and nuts and bolts. I cut a hole in a 3 quart containers lid the same diameter as the PVC funnel and epoxied the top of the lid to the PVC. Let this dry and now the 3 quart container can be screwed on. I cut off the lid and threads from another container and just attached it to the top using epoxy for easy filling. Next I created 4 3 inch legs using leftover PVC and attached them to the bottom at each corner. This will ensure the spout is high enough off the ground and also is a preventative for spills. I'm probably going to give it a wood stain and a glossy finish as a final touch. And there you have it. Let's see it in action. Well everyone, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Parker's Tutorials. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and you can also subscribe, press the little bell so you can be notified of all my future videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!